In this video we'll be looking at creating a splash. It's a scene from my animating with OpenTunes course that I'm creating and the seagull dives into the water here and creates a splash. Please go check out animating with OpenTunes. It's available via links on my YouTube channel here. Today we're just going to look at the actual splash. The seagull will be in a separate video. So as the seagull impacts the water, there's the first splash is just straight up and out as the seagull goes into the water and then the secondary part of the splash move will be the splash coming back into itself as the particles of water the droplets fall on the outside and it begins to create some impact waves moving outwards the third part will be a secondary splash coming up from the middle after the seagull has entered the water and that'll be coming up behind the first splash so that's the next part of the splash move and then that also recedes back into the water gravity takes effect and again the particles of water from that secondary splash come back to the water as as drops and the impact waves continue moving outwards then finally the actual splash has settled and all we left with are these impact waves moving outwards which slowly dissipate so that's basically the steps in creating a splash so let's have a look at our seagull going into the water here the actual seagull flight will be in a separate video so we start on a level here i'm working in open tunes we we start on a level creating the initial impact splash to speed up the process we can just copy the frame before and paste it down so we're just copying and pasting and we're extending these these rays or these um, arms of the splash out so it's it's a way to speed things up then we extend the the droplets at the end of these splash arms start making the droplets to come come off them they're going to separate from the actual splash and continue copying and pasting these frames down and eventually these droplets will be separate and they'll go their own way so you can see how the splash is moving upwards and outwards and then the droplets on the end have been separated so this is the very first thing we're doing here we're already on 12 frames and i've put onion skins on on the previous frame so i can see where these droplets and the actual splash are so that we have continuity so these these droplets want to want to be shooting upwards and outwards that one at the top will continue up a little bit more just for effect and then at the bottom the droplets are actually impacting with the water which we'll cover later so we we're getting close to the extent of the outward move the upwards and outward move here the splash kind of hangs momentarily in its in its apex in the top at the top here we've started to separate a bit more of the splash so there's going to be bigger pieces of water coming off and now we start to break it up and the splash starts to recede back in so this is the second move so the splash now has reached the, its height and its extent its, its biggest part and now it's starting to contract so we start to break up more water particles off the edges of the splash they can be less teardrop like these are more random and we start to as we continue down we start to make the initial splash recede again using the onion skin so we can see what the previous frame is looking like we want the actual initial splash to be receding all the way back into the water before the last of the droplets hit the water so they must have more hang time in the air that's the basic idea and we're almost there now it's basically just droplets and let's play through and that's looking pretty good see how there's a slight hang there yeah those last droplets are hitting the water after the actual splash has, has receded has disappeared let's just touch a few of these up at the top there just maybe add one or two okay so that's basically the first part and then part of the first part is we come and we put in some white edges on each of these frames with open tunes that's pretty easy put on the brush tool and if it's set to lines it will just you can just paint over the edges it won't go out of the edges so that's the second thing we do we can do it on the initial splash and we can do it on the droplets as as a move out you can do it on all the droplets but i basically just do it on the pieces that are moving really fast you, you'll get that that white water on the on the fast moving parts then we want to add some more detail we we can add some stress some white stress lines on the actual splash 
coming from the water reaching up so we we can do that again using the onion skins just to track that accurately and then we can start moving into the second phase where there is the second part of the splash will will be moving up so as the first part that initial splash recedes we've we've got a secondary splash that we looked at earlier and that's coming up the back so that's when the whole of the object or the seagull is in the water there's like a closing splash as the water comes together behind it and that's that's a taller and more narrow splash so that's what we're doing here the same thing, we want it to reach its apex and then fall back and droplets come off it. So let's run that through. Yeah, and again, the droplets are coming back slightly slower than the, the splashes receding back into, into the water. So you just want a bit more hang time on the droplets than the actual splash. You want the splash to move a little bit faster into the water and have a, a few of the droplets still airborne. Okay, and this one, the actual splash, is the last thing to get into the water. So I might go back and change that. But it looks good so far. And again, with a secondary splash, we can, we can select a slightly different color and go highlight the edges. Not white, we want to knock it back, or I want it to knock it back so that the actual secondary splash is a darker, darker blue. And I want the stress lines and the edges to be a slightly darker, darker white, a bluey white if you want. And remember, we can go and change these colors at any time just by changing the actual swatches. So it'll change the entire thing. So the colors aren't that important. These are just working colors. And that's starting to look good. So I've dropped it into a background here. I've dropped it, I've created some sea, some water, and I've dropped in some clouds. And let's see how that works. I'm pretty happy with that. So now what we need to do is the edges of the water, we just need to go over and add some highlights. We we can do this on, I'm doing this on a different level, but you can do it on the same level. Just add some white highlights around the edges there where the actual, the initial splash will be coming out of. And then we need to start putting in some impact ripples. We do this on a, on a separate level. I'm doing it in a slightly darker color. And the trick here is that they need to move outwards from a central point. I don't cover them coming out the back. Perhaps you can do that. There's a lot of splash in the way, so I didn't do that. But as they're coming up, they're getting thinner and they're starting to break up. And ultimately, they just dissipate and disappear. So that's, that's the next thing we're wanting to do here. Let's just run that through. Okay, it's looking pretty good. And then we want to add where the droplets come back to hit the water. We want to add some highlights there as well because they're actually hitting the water and they, they're creating a, a, another splash. So we're just going to highlight those pieces with white. And then we're pretty much done. I've gone and compressed this whole dive and splash into a single column. You can do that in open tunes. Um, it's called uh, subsheets. So I've done that. Um, we'll cover this more in the course. And now with everything in one column, you can go and animate that one column. You can go and change the spacing. You can set animation keys, etc. on the whole animation. So it makes animating the whole thing rather easy. So pretty cool. That's, you know, why I keep loving open tunes got some cool stuff like that and then we can also import that scene into another scene so I'm going to drop it into different backgrounds here at the end let's just render this out and have a look at it yeah okay and then we drop it into another background different background different C and have a look at it yeah I'm pretty happy with that I've got a few things that I do differently, but I'm, I'm very happy with that. So if you want the full version of this, um, including animating the seagull, please go check out my animating with OpenTunes course. The links are in the description. And of course, if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to sign up for the newsletter, please go and do that. Otherwise, thanks very much for joining my channel again, and I hope I'll see you around here again. All the best and happy animating out there.